Good morning, guys. It's an early start uh, as it is for me every Tuesday morning. I'm heading up to Nottingham um, with Chris uh, so that you guys can come with me and see really what a day in the life really looks like. There's many different components to M10 and one of the big components is the team uh, and the gym and everything that happens on a week to week basis, all the operational bits and bobs that I do on a week to week basis. So you're coming on the road with me. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. One of the really important parts of the business for me is supporting the guys and developing careers for the team. There's many different moving parts to M10, as I'll explain a lot later, but I can't grow without a team. And in doing that, the ideas that I have for where we're taking the business requires people to help me get there, which is ultimately what brings the opportunity for all of the team. And one of the massive things for me is that for me to grow, I need a team and the team know for them to grow, they also need me, which actually means it's a team effort. Um, and that's something that makes me uh, very, very excited and very proud of, of everything that we're building at M10. Every Tuesday I head up to Nottingham um, and spend the whole day with the guys looking, overseeing a lot of the, the dynamics that happen on a day-to-day -day basis at the gym. Um, but a lot of people don't really understand this, that um, the gym itself is our center of excellence. When we look at the center of excellence, it's, it's not just a center of excellence for the personal training that we deliver on a day-to-day -day basis, or the people that come to train at the gym because of the quality of the facility. Excellence for us is what we do as a brand. So under that one roof, developing the coaches, being a part of their education and development, testing and practicing a lot of the stuff that we teach on the mentorship. So on a day-to-day -day basis at M10, it's not just personal training, it's a center of excellence for developing the personal training, the standards and systems, and testing so much of what we do, um, which means it's, it, it's real. You know, what we teach is happening every single day. Um, and, and that keeps not a, not just the team fresh, but it's it's true, it's, it's happening on a day-to-day -day basis in the gym. Um, you know, as our clients evolve through different their, their journeys to lose weight and uh, improve their, their body shape and their health, um, you know, the guys are, the guys are right at the forefront of it. And that for me um, is one of the most incredible things about having the gym and having the team in the gym. It's a center of excellence, not just for the results that we produce with our clients. It's a center of excellence for everything that we develop moving on into the education. The drive that I have every week to Nottingham, two and a quarter, two and a half hours, sometimes there, two and a quarter, two and a half hours back. It's some of the most valuable time that I have every single week. You know, I listen to podcasts, I listen to learning and education to inspire my mind and give me ideas, but I also spend a lot of time like I'm doing right now, just alone. I spend a lot of time alone with my thoughts. And this precious time for me is kind of where I declutter and I filter ideas, you see, we spend so much time every day around noise. Other people's noise, you know, just the day to day, whether it's social media, there's so much noise. And I value, I've talked about this a lot before, I value alone time, I value me time. And often a lot of people feel unproductive when they're not doing anything. I don't, I find this time you know, I used to get the train up to Nottingham a lot, and I used to get distracted with the laptop and distracted with my phone. And then when I drive and I just think, what thinking does to me, it, 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 when you're alone, I, I always talk about holiday, in fact. When I go on a holiday, the first day when I'm on holiday, my brain just can't think. It's just, I know how cluttered it is. And then day two, it starts to relief, release a little bit. And that used to frustrate me a couple of times a year going on a holiday, not get that time. 
and I now know how long it takes my brain. If I can get it done each week, and I know that when as soon as I get in the car, I let my brain filter. Um, and when I pull over in the service station, I make some notes. And it's just a case of valuing alone time and making sure every single week that you have. I mean, this is a four, four and a half, five hour alone time that I get. Um, and I process a lot of the ideas that I've had and I look at the positives and negatives of things and come to conclusions. And, and alone time gives me to come to time to come to conclusions but also when you're alone ideas pop out of your head and if you don't have that alone time you don't give yourself the opportunity to be creative and I remember Jay Shetty said that uh, we can't be creative when we're cluttered we can't be creative when we're busy and as a as an entrepreneur myself I have to be creative I have to think what's next what's working what's not working where do I need this where do I need that and and that's why I value alone time. You know, whether it's going for a walk, whether or not it's driving for long periods of time, actually scheduling in alone time is where I'm the most creative. And uh, you know, I'll pull over frequently and make some notes on my phone or on a, on a pad. Um, but uh, never underestimate the power of being on your own. Okay guys, so we've just got here. Uh, I'm gonna head down, see everybody, and say good morning. So guys, for those of you that haven't actually seen M10 and don't really know where everything is, um, this, as you can see, uh, is the gym floor. The whole of the gym floor. And the bit that you don't normally see is what else we've got. So, we've got the assessment room here. Um, we've got another assessment room, I'll show you that in a second. Kind of use that for consultations. Um, we won't go in, but there's the male and female changing rooms down here. Uh, we've got a permanent fixture, which is Stan. He's here, regularly eating. Uh, waiting area. Kitchen, and we've got a pretty, pretty hefty storage area up there, which for years we've been thinking of doing something with, but we haven't done anything with it yet. And then we have a uh, kind of consultation, assessment room, work room for the guys. There is another one here, but as you can see. Oh, <coughs> it's occupied. So we'll change that in a second. And then Tracy, the Hi. boss uh, in here. Jem's normally with her. You'll see Jem a little bit later. That's it for now. So this part of the day uh, is where Sarah Dawson from Dawson Plum Accountants has come over um, to be here to go through the accounts with myself and Tracy, who uh, heads up all of the kind of financial controlling and operations uh, at M10. And M10 as a group, as I've said to you many times, there's many different components to the business, uh, whether or not it's the mentorship, whether it's the mastermind, we need our financial house to be in order and that means sitting down and breaking down every part of the business looking at the income looking at the outgoings looking at the cost of the business and basically being in control of everything financial so uh that's what we're going to crack on with now yeah. this is an overview yeah. what what we need trace is these monthly income stream reports the income gyms then personal training then the, the, the master we did a breakdown of right what costs of specifically relating to the gym yeah. that we could almost strip away and say if you ran the gym on its own the income from that the PT costs the an allocation of the costs for the business yeah. uh, so the rent and the insurance they're clearly in relation to this how much do you allocate to the other elements of the business so the next meeting today is all about our online coaching business and the challenges that we run. So looking at the forecast of what we're running, uh, the marketing that we're gonna put in place, and also the systems that we're running moving into 2021 with regards to the online coaching. Yeah, so that's how it looks. So it sits up now. Okay. You want to go to apply, and then there's even more, which is making you go, wow. That's good. So the whole, the whole, the whole thing looks fucking amazing. So the, the mm -hmm. add-on, I think, if I'm honest, the what, what's getting a lot of attention, you can see this look. 
So uh, if you click on that link, these people are already liking it. Look, how cool is that? Oh my God, these are outstanding results. So they're people that have never seen us before. So if we're already getting that many tra attraction off an ad that's going out, we're not spending much money on the ad. We've had six inquiries on day one. Rid of that, what will we put in its place? Well, we spoke about the lateral raise machine, but it's just, it doesn't get as much use because obviously with, with the pendulum, the hack and the leg press in regards to what we teach yeah, yeah. and the modalities that we already use. So the, the power squat is not and it's as essential. And I know with a lot of the guys, not a lot of the guys uses the power squat anyway. Well, should we put it to the guys in the meet? Yeah, speak to them. Because I was looking at alternatives and I mentioned potentially the Nautilus hip drive, but obviously we've got the Watson, but that means we'd have to get rid of the Watson that hip, hip, hip as well. But again, there's a lot of alternatives. Guys, Dan and I were just having a chat about some of the kit and potentially moving some bits and bobs around, reinvesting in the gym and making sure that it's continually evolving. Dan, um, as many of you will know, uh, has been a huge part of the brand for a long time. Uh, not only is he director of personal training here and supports the growth and development of the team, but Dan and I are actually business partners in the personal training mentorship business. So Dan's an in, in incredibly important part of this business and we meet every Monday um, on Zoom with me being in London. And then every Tuesday we spend a lot of time talking to each other, not just about what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, we've both have got a very, very big vision. As you've seen, the individual parts of the business, the mentorship, it's a huge part of what we do, and it's a huge part that's going to grow even bigger. So, you know, you'll see plenty more of Dan in the videos to come. Um, and for now, we're going to head on to the team meeting. So this part of the day is where we'll bring all the guys together, we'll have a team meeting, um, discuss anything relevant to personal training, personal training clients. Um, also, we get together and talk about the mentorship, anything to do with online training, just bring everybody together for an hour. Um, so let us crack on with the meeting. Talk about adherence and how important adherence is, then go through the stages of change, but tweak it so that when I go through the stages of change, not only go through the key considerations as a coach, look at potentially which nutritional staff strategies would be relevant for those people, but also potentially touch a little bit on also from a programming standpoint. So trying to tie in the bits and bobs that we've already spoken about in past webinars and tying it in to the stages of change. I think Dan and I talked about it on Monday, is the fact that we know that confidence, or all of, all of you, like from the beginning of being a personal trainer, you've got to fake it a bit till you make it, potentially, they're not very confident when they start. They've got a bit of self-doubt, overwhelm being in the fitness industry. And going on the gym floor, when you start with a client, you've got to be confident and you've got to, you've got to know what you're on about. So if the client says, I'm not following at the weekend, you, can't, you don't crumble. I think what we need to do is, and Dan and I were talking about it, we've got to give them a, a literally the answers to what you'd say. Oh, I'm not following my diet at the weekend. And then they collapse because they, they think they're shit. But if we go down like five or 10 of the biggest obstacles that you face from a client's psychology perspective, we give the answers to it, but also a bit of context as to why. Mm. So there will be a psychological answer as to, I've not followed the diet this weekend. And as a trainer you go, is the solution do better next week? Do you, do you know what I mean? And the, and the trainer goes, well, let's see how you get on next week. And there's another week where they put a few pounds on. Whereas Dan, one of the things that, that we really touched on on the phone call is, Dan has a methodology that he deals with that. But what is that? Is it, oh, I'm just intuitive, like I, I know what I do. Mm. Well, we need to find a way of getting Dan's intuition out. We actually researched intuition and said, when you've got intuition, what is it? What are the traits of the, so that's what the, the day in the life? Life discovers a magnetic whiteboard. Absolutely blown away. This is the first time we've ever had a whiteboard cleaner. Phenomenal. Look at it. <laughs> Very impressed. We stepped up. What are the biggest problems that we um, encounter when it comes to clients and client psychology? Because I almost feel like my clients that have started to change their perception around situations so actually almost get a buzz out of fully understanding the situation now. But instead of coming out drained, they come out on a high because they're like, fuck, I dealt with that well. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And having an awareness that other people are going to perceive different things mm. of you when you go through that change. Mm. And just discussing that topic in itself, I think, will be a good, as an action point. I just think that if you have a selection of slides with the biggest common problems that we've got, perception is another subject, 
just like if you give everybody a mechanics to to seminar without anything to take away and work on mm. they're so inexperienced around psychology if we keep layering on complexity without outcome or something to, to, to work on so would you say that the social circle thing is a biggest psychological challenge that people come in and say my friends just don't support me I think so I think in, in this day and age social yeah. circle is a big is a big thing isn't it I think it's more relationship and family yeah. than That's it is true. friends yeah because it's the people that they live with 24 so could well, we, so partners, seven days a week partners, partners yeah mm. a client comes in they're down because their friends are now starting to realize they're making a positive change in their life and that they're, they're not supporting them here are three options or here are three potential options you could do, go down you could say to the client it would be wise to cut that person out of your life and here's the reason why you could say to the client you might need to look at reassessing what's important to you now yeah, or something like that mm. Don't put that on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that bit out. Again, can you send that bit to me? <laughs> so I think that one of the biggest issues is seeing a client not lose weight, but then them not telling the trainer why and saying that they're actually adhering and they're sticking they're not to telling it. Me the truth. Exactly. So how, how do we So how do we how find that out? Encourage, encourage exactly. the truth. It is 20 to 5, um, we've just wrapped up the team meeting, as you can still probably hear the boys are having a good chuckle towards the end of the day, but uh, before I get on the road, uh, I take advantage of being in my gym uh, with the incredible equipment we have, I always have a workout uh, about half past four um, before I head off about six o'clock, so I'm going to head on in, put some music on, switch off for a little bit and... Uh, do a pull session. this equipment so what I tend to do quite often is rotate between push and pull on a Tuesday so I get a chance to try everything and uh, these prime pieces of equipment are uh, you don't come across them very often and we're very lucky and fortunate to have them here so when I'm here I tend to take full advantage of the, of the equipment that we have here and then use everything else that's at my disposal when I'm back in London. Now, for those of you that don't know, M10 actually started out with, I think we had 14 pieces of equipment. And as you can see from the filming that Chris has been doing with me, we've grown over the years. We've invested a lot in the equipment, um, changing some, taking some out, taking some in. As you heard, I was talking to Dan about earlier to ensure that we just have the best training experience. So uh, it's, uh, certainly is a fantastic place to get the opportunity to train when I'm here. Okay guys, that is the day nearly done. Still the drive back to London to do, um, but I really hope you've enjoyed the insight into my day, uh, what happens here at the gym, and you've got to know a little bit more about me, the team, and M10 as a brand. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure you click subscribe or tap the bell, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.